Let's say we want to prove that solving some problem x requires, for example, at least five communication rounds. We could, in principle, do this as follows. Consider any algorithm A that runs in four rounds. Then show that algorithm A fails to solve x. But it's often very hard to reason about what an algorithm might do in four rounds. Of course, a four-round algorithm is just a mapping from radius four neighborhoods to local outputs. But there is a huge number of possible mappings. How could we argue that all of them will fail? It would be much easier to argue that x can't be solved in zero rounds. Zero-round algorithms are very restrictive. There are not that many possibilities. It is often very quick to show that a zero-round algorithm will necessarily fail. But how do we connect these two? We'd like to prove that four-round algorithms will fail. We can easily prove that zero-round algorithms will fail. We will apply here a technique called round elimination. We start with problem x0. We assume that there is an algorithm a0 that solves x0 in four rounds. We apply round elimination to x0. We get a new problem x1. And if our assumption is right, we also get an algorithm a1 that solves x1 in three rounds. We eliminated one round in the running time. Notice that x1 is a different problem. We are interested in x0, but we got a new problem x1. But let's not worry about this. We can just continue. We apply round elimination to x1, we get a new problem x2. And if our assumptions are right, we also get an algorithm a2 that solves x2 in two rounds. Repeat. We get a new problem x3, and we also get an algorithm a3 that solves x3 in one round. Repeat, we get a new problem x4, and we also get an algorithm a4 that solves x4 in zero rounds. And now this is what we wanted. Assuming x0 can be solved in four rounds, we can solve x4 in zero rounds. And now it is enough to show that x4 cannot be solved in zero rounds. If you can show that all possible zero-round algorithms for x4 fail, then we have a contradiction. Therefore, x3 can't be solved in one round. x2 can't be solved in two rounds. x1 can't be solved in three rounds. And x0 can't be solved in four rounds. And this is exactly what we wanted to prove. Of course, there is nothing magic about the value 4 here. If you can do 10 steps of round elimination and still arrive at a problem that is not zero round solvable, we know that the original problem cannot be solved in 10 rounds. If you can do any number of round elimination steps, then the original problem cannot be solved in constant time, and so on. So, to recap, round elimination is a technique that turns a problem x0 into a new problem x1 that can be solved one round faster. It can only be used when a problem is in the right form. We must have a so-called bipartite locally verifiable problem. Few problems are directly given in this form, but many problems can be turned into this form and then round elimination works. Informally, if the problem is defined in terms of local constraints, it is good. For example, graph coloring is such a problem. There is a constraint on each edge. The endpoints must have different colors. And there are no other constraints. If a coloring looks good in all local neighborhoods, then it is indeed a valid solution. A maximal independent set is also something you can define using local constraints. Independence can be checked by 
looking at each edge. Maximality can be checked by looking at the local neighborhood of each node. On the other hand, connectivity and acyclicity are global properties, so we can't study problems like spanning trees using these tools. Okay, so what does a bipartite locally verifiable problem look like? We will look at problems in regular trees. But this isn't usually any real restriction, as we are trying to prove negative results. If we can show that the problem can't be solved fast in regular trees, then certainly it can't be solved fast in general graphs. And it turns out that regular trees are the worst case for many problems. In the lecture notes you'll find the general definitions. Here I'll just give one example. This is a problem that we call weak tree labeling. This problem is defined in trees, in which nodes are partitioned in two roles, active and passive. These roles form the proper two coloring of the tree. Each edge is connecting an active node and a passive node. We will ignore the leaf nodes, they are unconstrained. We only care about what happens in the middle of the tree. And here all active nodes have degree 3 and all passive nodes have degree 2. And what is the task? Each active node has to label its incident edges with colors red, green and blue. And there are two constraints. Active nodes must not be monochromatic. That is, all three edges around an active node can't have the same color. For example, this is good, and so is this, but this one is forbidden. Conversely, passive nodes must be monochromatic. Both of the edges around a passive node must have the same color. For example, this is good, but this is forbidden. Now, this is our problem x0. We would like to understand how fast this can be solved. It's easy to check that this can't be solved in zero rounds. Active nodes must use at least two different colors, but then if you do it without any coordination, there is a risk that a passive node gets two incident edges with different colors. Let's do round elimination once and see what's the problem x1 that we get. You can look at the lecture notes for how to do it with pen and paper, or you can just ask computers. Either way, we will get this problem. It's very similar to what we already had. It turns out we basically just swapped the roles of active and passive nodes. Again, it's easy to check that this can't be solved in zero rounds. Active nodes must use the same color for both of their incident edges, and if you apply any deterministic rule, the only possible algorithm is something like color everything red, and this will clearly fail. So we already know something. X1 can't be solved in zero rounds. So the original problem X0 can't be solved in one round. You need at least two rounds to solve x0. Let's do round elimination again. Now we'll get problem x2. Now this problem is something a lot more interesting. Here is one interpretation of it. In this problem, your task is to label edges with sets of colors. Active nodes have the following constraint. There has to be one set that doesn't contain red, and one set that doesn't contain green, and one set that doesn't contain blue. So for example, this is fine, and so is this, but this isn't. Here we got green in all sets. Passive nodes have the following constraint. The sets must have a non-empty intersection. So, for example, this is fine and this, but this isn't. 
they are no common elements. Now, can you solve this problem in zero rounds? This takes some thought, but it turns out it is possible. Active nodes can always pick a solution like this. Red green on one edge, red blue on one edge, green blue on one edge. Why is this good? Well, it's clearly fine for active nodes, as for each color there is one set that does not contain it. And it's also fine for passive nodes. If you get some two element set here and another two element set here, no matter what they are, they have to contain some common element, like here or here. So x2 is solvable in zero rounds, while x1 isn't. It turns out this means that the complexity of x1 is exactly one round, and the complexity of x0 is exactly two rounds. Now, how do you solve x0 in two rounds? We can work backwards. We start with a zero round algorithm for x2 and spend one round to turn it into a solution for x1, and then another round to turn it into a solution for x0. You will fill in the details in one of this week's exercises.